This video will walk you through the process of a nerve impulse, which is an electrochemical signal transmitted along a nerve fiber to allow communication between nerve cells. It will be easier to understand this video if you have already looked through the glossary of terms, but you may return to the glossary at any point if you do not understand a term. In resting nerve cells, the inside of the cell is negatively charged compared to the outside of the cell. The outside of the cell has a higher concentration of sodium, while the inside of the cell has a higher concentration of potassium. Therefore, the resting membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolts. An action potential begins when a stimulus depolarizes a nerve cell to threshold. When threshold is reached, voltage-gated channels open and sodium enters the cell. The rapid entry of sodium further depolarizes the cell. The potassium channels open slowly while the sodium channels close. Potassium leaves the cell and the membrane potential begins to become negative again. The potassium gates close more slowly than the sodium gates, leaving the cell hyperpolarized because more potassium leaves the cell than sodium entered. During this time, another action potential cannot be sent unless the stimulus is very large. Surrounding cells become depolarized as the nerve impulse travels along the axon. Remember that a myelated axon will conduct the signal much faster than an unmyelated one. When the impulse reaches the axon terminal, neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic terminal. The neurotransmitters travel across the synaptic cleft to the postsynaptic terminal to stimulate the postsynaptic neuron. The potential gradient is determined by the sodium-potassium ATPase pump, leaky channels, and a concentration of anions trapped in the cell. Sulfate, phosphate, and negatively charged proteins do not leave the cell because they are too large to exit through the cell membrane without active transport. The membrane is more permeable to potassium than sodium. Therefore, more potassium leaks out of the cell than sodium enters. This leaking of potassium out of the cell helps keep a negative resting membrane potential. The sodium-potassium pump also assists in restoring the resting membrane potential by transporting potassium into the cell and sodium out of the cell after an action potential has occurred. This pump requires ATP to move three sodium ions out and two potassium ions in. An easy way to remember this is a simple sodium-potassium pump party. At this imaginary party, sodium and potassium do not want to be in the same room. The bouncer, ATP, mediating the issue, said to potassium, K, you're in, and to sodium, nah, you're out. The resting membrane potential is now reset, and a new nerve impulse can be conducted if threshold is reached. Now that you know the process of a nerve impulse, you may test your knowledge by taking the short quiz on the next page.